welcome to the show, welcome to the show. Here to give you knowledge that you didn't know. Put you on some game, now you got a buzz. You are now listening to Canna Bros. We, we have these things, right? When we're in like actual business meetings for Harvest Accounting Firms, we literally have these times just because, you know, that's my boy for a long time. And also, is my business partner and we're at Bros, right? But um, we have these times where we're just dreaming. And, and I, I started to call them like, a, like, uh, like they're just dream meetings. So we literally will call each other and be on the phone equally as long as we are when we're like, being productive, getting things done, taking care of uh, business tasks and all that kind of stuff. We'll spend equally as amount of time just dreaming. And my opinion, and I think Corey can share in this, is that's always important because we have so many people out here that are, man, they killing it. They so technically sound um, yes. that they um, are hitting everything. They, they know they're making good money and all this stuff, but they hate what they do for a living they hate right. the way like they hate how it makes them feel they hate their work environment everything like that because right. a lot of times they lose purpose you can't be out here losing purpose in the mission like your purpose is not to get the company to 2.1 million dollars in the pen that's not your that's not your purpose your purpose is putting five carrots in your baby girl ear you know what i'm saying hey, shout out to the notorious big man Rest hey, look a question for you yeah now I want to keep that take. Yeah. How does that tie in? Oh man, I I I, I dropped it. <laughs> <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome Yo. to another episode. Yep. My name is Jarrell. I'm Corey, and we are the, the Canada Bros. This is your industry insider from two guys at Harvest Accounting Firm who are literally teaching you the ins and outs the news, and things that you'll need in order to be able to operate effectively and legally uh, yep, yep, yep. in the United States, right? So we're going to be covering a couple different things, and we want to break it down to you. Break it down, Corey. We're going to go ahead. We're going to start off with word on the street. What yeah. word on the street is, is news, news, updates, current events that's happened in the cannabis industry, things that directly impact can of businesses, ganjapreneurs, can of sores. And it's just interesting facts overall when it comes to cannabis. Following word on the street, we got yeah. put you on game. Put you on game. So the, the purpose yeah. of put you on game is we're going to facilitate content for you so that you can understand different tactics, strategies, concepts that can help your business succeed. Again, uh, a big model of ours is from seed to success. Yes. We want to make sure that we are there to help give you the insight you need for your business to succeed. Or again, if you just love learning about cannabis, hey, this is perfect for you as well. Yeah. And then we're going to finalize it with plug talk. Plug hey. talk. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and so we're going to go ahead and we're going to plug some new businesses in the cannabis industry. So we're going to go ahead and throw your business up there. We're going to see what you got. We're going to share your business to the world. Hopefully we can shed some light, get you some more support and help you succeed overall. There Again, a big thing for us is uh, adding more black faces in the green spaces. Yeah, there you have it, man. So we are going to kick it off, first of all, with the word on the street. So what we got for word on the street this week? All right, so we got a couple things. Uh, we're going to go ahead and kick it off with Mexico. Okay. So Mexico officially decriminalized cannabis throughout the entire country. Come oh, on. Geez. Let's go. go, Mexico. Hey, shout out, oh. shout out to Mexico, man. That's that's a huge step. Uh, especially so imagine this. Yeah. You're not getting arrested for <clears throat> cannabis. Can, right. you, can you can you imagine a world like that? I, I can't I see it already on the horizon. The thing is, man, we trying to we're trying to get there. Yeah, man. Like, like just economically, man, just think the impact of people not going to jail from having cannabis on them. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to pull some information from CNN, actually. Okay. I'm going to read you this uh, excerpt real quick. So okay. Mexico's Supreme Court struck down laws which criminalized the recreational use of cannabis on Monday evening. 
The decisive eight to three ruling comes after advocates push for decriminalization as a means to reduce drug fueled cartel violence in the country. Of course, yeah. The court declared the prohibition of cannabis unconditional, uh, unconstitutional mm -hmm. in 2018, okay. leading lawmakers to move forward on passing a bill. Now, it says to legally obtain cannabis, citizens must apply for a permit from the country's health regulator, the uh, Federal Commission for Protection Against Health Risks. Mm -hmm. um, and the acronym for that is COFPRIS. C O F E P R I S, Kofi Press. That's how I'm just gonna rock with that. <laughs> um, <laughs> once permitted, anybody over 18 years of age can possess, guess what? Up to 28 grams of cannabis. Talking about a whole onion. 28 grams. Yeah, okay. Now it says, so before Mexican citizens were able to access cannabis, but uh, only after filing a court injunction. Technically, medicinal marijuana has been available there since 2017. Now that once you get permission through COFPRIS, mm -hmm. you can start obtaining permits to cultivate and everything like that. So that's pretty cool, man. That's big, man, because just farming in general, like farming in Mexico is, is big. So right, you're talking right. About Huge. Dang. Yeah. staple for their uh, economy. So, uh, again, now we got New Mexico to the west. Right. We got Oklahoma to the north. We got Mexico to the south. Come on, Texas. Texas, what we doing? Come on, Texas. What we doing, man? So, I, I have the answer. I, I figured out how we can legalize it. What you thinking? Are you ready? I'm, I'm listening. We all listening. All right. So, what pushed Mexico over the edge okay. is the drug fueled cartel violence. So, mm -hmm. I mean, all, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is I don't condone violence at all. But if we had a little bit of drug fueled cartel violence, uh... <laughs> you need to be, a, you need to be about that life. That's all we're saying. Hey, I, like... <laughs> look, look, a little, a little narcos action a in bit. the U.S. And it is looking like it'll be legalized. I'm just saying, yo, that's a genius plan. Yep, it needs yep, to start you, from you. within, right? You. It, yep, it needs yep. to start from within. So it's going to be hard for immigrants to start. So, hey, we can't wait on them. Yep, you know what I'm saying? Yep. What we need is some homegrown, I'm talking about pot stewed criminal activity. Now, now, <laughs> let's say the violence is not like severe violence. Let's, I just, let it be light violence. Like, like breaking pinky toes, like <laughs> uh, uh, giving everybody uh, paper cuts between their fingers and stuff like that, like like, like messing them up, boy. Yeah, stuff stuff that just inconveniences your entire day. That is just so annoying that you're just like, hey man, we just gotta legalize it. You got three paper cuts. You're not going to work. Oh no, no, you, you, call <laughs> <laughs> you call it You calling it three paper cuts, man? It's not happening. The the next word on the street, we're gonna, we're gonna hop into that Delta Eight. I'm telling you, everybody talking Delta Eight, man. My mother in law talking Delta Eight. Yeah, yeah. man, it, it kind of came out of the blue. I hadn't really heard about it. I, really, to be honest with you, I hadn't really heard about different types of THC up until probably about last year. I just thought THC was THC. So now there's a difference. So typically when when you get drug tested, they test for Delta 9 THC. That's right. That's right. right. Now here comes Delta 8. Let me go ahead and dive into the content real quick to, to read it to you. Right. Man, Delta 8, man, I'm telling you, is coming in. They got Delta 8 gummies, man. That That's the main one that's, that's killing the game right now. You got to remember, like... Um, you're also getting uh, flour and all kind of other like consumable. Uh, so, you know, that, that people are trying to get as close to the line as possible before right. the station happens. So how can they get there? All right. So the, the information that I'm pulling from is from Ounce of Hope, right? Okay. Uh, you can find them on ounceofhope.com. It breaks down the difference between Delta 8 and Delta 9. It's okay. bonded on the, the eighth carbon versus the ninth carbon. Science talk. I'm not, yeah. I'm not a scientist whatsoever, okay. but uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's, it's something like that. Right. Hey, hey, 
Don't stab me if if I said that incorrectly, uh, you scientists out there. I, I they gonna, apologize. They're going to kill this man in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> as far as Delta 8 goes, stays in your system similarly as long as Delta 9, right? Because it's still THC. Right. Still THC. So that's that's a common misnomer. And it, it kind of plays into this next question. Can it can it make me fill a drug test, right? Mm -hmm. So So even though Delta 8, is not delta nine, which is what they typically test for. Right. It's still THC, right? Yes. And so because it's still THC, according to some of the scientists, they're saying that it'll uh, read a false positive on your drug test. Mm -hmm. And so a false positive versus a regular positive, I'm not sure your company cares if it's a false positive or not. All they, all they see is that it's positive and you falsely thought you were employed here. So <laughs> <laughs> what's false was your badge ID. <laughs> That's what's false. You thought your key code worked to get in the building. And and I'm also pulling information uh, from leafly.com as well. Delta 8 will get you high, albeit not as high as the common Delta 9 THC. Right. For those living in states where cannabis is illegal, Delta 8 may be a legal way to experience some THC-like effects from cannabis. Right. Right. So back to your point, what you were saying earlier, that you know people are trying to the to total line to get as yeah. close to getting the real thing as possible. Yeah. Yeah. But not enough to get penalized, right? And if let's say you're you enjoy cannabis, but it's typically too strong, right? Then that's yeah. also an alternative for people that they live in a state where marijuana is legal, then Delta 8 can be a benefit for you. Yeah, just different alternative, right? Now, speaking of marijuana, <laughs> so Delta 8 can be derived from both hemp and marijuana. Mm -hmm. If you if you think about it in a, in a nutshell, the difference between, again, hemp and marijuana is hemp is 0.3 THC and lower, right. and marijuana is 0.31 and higher, right? Anything above. But Delta 8 from hemp is legal, right? Because it's not marijuana. It's, it's derived from a hemp product in the states that are okay with hemp. But Delta 8 can be derived as well from marijuana. So you also want to make sure that you understand where it comes from because that can also have some effect on the legality behind it. Right. Now, overall, is Delta 8 legal uh, federally? Because that's the so, question everybody wants to know. Delta 8 is currently in the gray area, right? So it's not technically legal, but it's not technically illegal. This is where the hangup is for Delta 8. In August 2020, the DEA released an, an interim final rule. So it's an IFR, a document meant to update and confirm the differences between hemp and cannabis. The interim rule said all synthetically derived tetrahydrocannabinols, or, or sorry, tetrahydrocannabinol, cannabinols, am I saying that right? Don't kill them in the comments. Mercy on my boy. All synthetic derived THC <laughs> 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 remain schedule one controlled substances. And so Delta 8 is a, a technically illegal federally because it's a it's THC that is extracted and or synthetically derived right and it is synthetically and so so because it's synthetically derived federally is still considered illegal right, right. but it's still in that gray area because they really haven't enforced it or anything mm -hmm. uh so you still can find delta eight in in shops and everything so it's everywhere as we Get more information in regards to Delta 8. We'll definitely share it with. It's definitely interesting topic when it comes to cannabis. That's your word on the street, man. First of all, uh, that we're definitely going to keep you up, updated on yep. Delta, Delta 8 versus, versus Delta 9 and see how close we can get <laughs> right, right. Uh, up to full legalization in this country because it's just something that's not going to be an uh, issue. I think it'll just be another item when you look at like when they're itemizing uh, okay, of all the legal things, once uh, cannabis is fully legalized in the country. The next thing that we have is put you on game. We're going to put you on some game. What we're going to talk about today 
is the big mama jam the big kahuna the michael jordan of all cannabis cases america rebelling from england and winning you know what we're talking about what are we talking about champs champs the champs case there's a boxer and forgive me i can't think of his name right now but it is his saying is let's go champ let's go <laughs> champ yeah. I'm going to channel his energy. The champ versus the commissioner. It set the precedent for all cannabis cases for businesses that have multiple products that they offer, multiple services that they offer that aren't always cannabis related. How are they taxed? Are they all going to be taxed as cannabis? Can they be partially taxed as cannabis, partially taxed as ordinary business? Mm -hmm. Let's find out. Here's a breakdown of Californians helping to alleviate medical problems versus the commissioner, okay? Break a couple things down real quick, just so we have a general insight of what we're looking at, right? This stands for CHAMP, of course, C-H-A-M-P, CHAMP versus the commissioner. This TC right here stands for tax court. So, and this is the judge from the tax court. So, Judge Lero, from the tax court is the respondent right okay. here okay okay Got it. the petitioner is champs Amazing. champ and the commissioner is reviewing this so so champ it was champ versus the tax court right mm -hmm. tax court rule uh what they ruled which we'll, we'll talk about in a second right. and then it went from the tax court to the commissioner and the commissioner is ultimately like the appeal, the next level where you can appeal, right? And yeah. so the the uh, champ is appealing to the commissioner. So I just want y'all to have the three uh, main big players going forward so you can understand some of the, the verbiage. All right, let's hop into it. So we're gonna hit the highlights of the champ case. We're not gonna go all the way into the weeds of everything because we value your time. We know you got stuff to do, <laughs> groceries to pick up, kids to babysit or pick up from daycare we understand hey you might you might be waiting to go to the dispensary to pick up some cannabis and you're just waiting on us to finish all right so let's go ahead and get started i'm going to read you this excerpt real quick just to paint the picture of what we're looking at okay petitioner which is champ was organized on december 24th 1996 uh in california its articles of incorporation state that it's organized and operated exclusively for charitable educational and scientific purposes okay. and the property of this corporation is irrevocably dedicated to charitable purposes the petitioner which is champs did not have federal tax exempt status and it operated as an approximately break even as it shows right there amount of his income approximated the amount of his expenses community center for members with debilitating diseases approximately 47 percent of the petitioner's members suffered from AIDS. The remainder suffered from cancer, multiple sclerosis, and other serious illnesses. So uh, before joining CHAMPS, the petitioners, so CHAMPS, executive director had 13 years of experience in health services as a coordinator of a statewide program that trained outreach workers in AIDS prevention work. So CHAMPS operated with a dual purpose. Its primary purpose was to provide caregiving services to his members. His second purpose was to provide his members with a medicinal or medical marijuana pursuant to the California Compassionate Use Act of 1996, and to instruct those individuals on how to use medical marijuana to benefit their health. Okay, 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 okay. I got all that, but look, so I'm about to break it down for you. Okay. Let me go ahead and translate that. So basically, these people decided out of the goodness of their hearts for the love of the flower to literally start an organization just to help cure AIDS and other illnesses um, and diseases that are plaguing that we all know about back in 96, right? They weren't even trying to make money. These people weren't trying to make money. They wanted to break even, meaning it's like, it's set up as a nonprofit. Yes, there's, there's stuff is going to come in, stuff is going to go out. Basically, your income equals your expenses. So that means you're not looking to get rich off of anything. You're looking to literally balance it out so it's only advantageous to the people who really need the help medically. So look, this is what they were doing. 
my man Corey just basically letting y'all know that they were out here trying to give caregiving services, right? So they just want to be caregivers. And then they were going to go ahead and lace them with a little medical marijuana ID situation, right? So that, because they're in, in California, California uh, passed something in the same year. That's all y'all need to know. And basically, they are just trying to make sure they get help with the right treatment and the right flower for the hour. You know what I'm saying? So that's, <laughs> that's it. That's it. Anytime I say petitioner or when you see petitioner, I'm just going to go ahead and say champs just so it doesn't get confusing. And plus petitioner equals champs. Champs is a lot easier to say. All right. Let's, gonna keep, let's keep it pushing. <laughs> champs had many different services, caregiving services for all of their members to include medical marijuana. So their first service that they offer, they held weekly and bi-weekly support group sessions that could be only attended by CHAMPS members, okay? okay. The so second service is they provided low-income members with daily lunches. Okay. The third service is they allowed the members to consult one-on-one -on -one with the counselor before health housing, safety, and legal issues. Let's go. The fourth service is they allowed their members, or they coordinated for their members weekend social events, including a Friday night movie or guest speaker and live music on Saturdays with, with meal. Uh, the fifth service they provided is they instructed their members on yoga and on topics on how to participate in social services at the CHAMPS facilities and how to follow the member guidelines. The sixth service, CHAMPS provided its members with online computer access and delivered informational services through its website. Mm. The seventh, <laughs> make sure we ain't lose account, CHAMPS uh, encourages its members to participate in political activities. CHAMPS furnishes services in its main facility in San Fran, so in San Francisco, California, and at an office in a community church in San Francisco. So the main facility was approximately 1,350 square feet. This location was also the site where CHAMPS members received their distribution of medical marijuana. Mm, okay. Now, the mer medical marijuana was dispensed at a counter in the main room of the facility, so taking up approximately about 10% of the main facility square footage. Okay, so their location, people come through the back because you got to remember they're also providing their people with medical marijuana, right? Yep. So you got to remember, and, and by the way, I, I don't want the church part to go over, like, you know, there was, you got to know it's the whole, like, spiritual environment, you know what I'm saying, just getting you right mentally, uh, legally, like they had, man, housing safety-wise, like they got all that going. Then yep. a little over 1,300 square feet, 10%, which is about 135 square feet only, being used for the medical marijuana. And on top of that, when it comes to the medical marijuana, so the, the CHAMPS members were prohibited from bringing that cannabis into the church, right? So they had, they had to, that little area is the only area that they could get the cannabis and they couldn't take it back into the facility where they're offering all these other services. Right, so, so there's literally a line being drawn like i mean a physical i imagine like red tape yep on the ground like don't go past here now some little some uh computer paper somebody wrote on a sharpie no weed past this point <laughs> <laughs> hey no weed passes past the red tape like, all violators will be prosecuted <laughs> the violators will be we are not responsible at that point they look like they tried to cover their bases bro from the jump right right what else? Now, this next part is really interesting. So, Champs paid for the services it provided to his members by charging a membership fee. Mm -hmm. And both the cost of the caregiving services and the cost of the medical marijuana that they supplied to his members. So, so that, that membership fee covered both. All in one. It, it, yep. covers, it covers all the services and it covers the actual uh, weed that's being given. So, so it's, you know, they're, they're giving it out, they supplying and everything, but really you kind of paying for it. You know what I mean? Like, you're, you're really, like, yeah, like, they get it. Like, they look like, you know, they, they, they just look like a, and I'm going to leave that one alone. But they, <laughs> like, like if you well, know what I was thinking. Well, well literally, 
you what you thinking i would view it like this the weed or the marijuana could be free right so they're saying hey you pay for all these services and a part of all these services comes some uh some medical marijuana right 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 yeah exactly yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, man, I know. I ain't, bro, trust me, I was running around in first grade in 96. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I can imagine I'm kind of seeing the setup, visual, visualizing it a little bit. Yeah. I see the red tape. And then I also see, like, a front desk, and I'm thinking, these people are, you know, they give you a little package. Hey, this is what comes in the package. It's a little uh, flyer brochure, right, that's breaking it down. Right. Uh, and they probably don't even mention the marijuana. But if I say, yo, man, I was going through this, you know, uh, I, I don't know, maybe, a, you know, a, a dark place or I was at a dark place and, uh, you know, it was homeless or whatever. And I really, you know, needed some safe haven to go. You know, I went here. They got me right. And between you and me. They giving out weed, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, like, bro. Why didn't you start with that? <laughs> like, I'm already in the car. Let's go, right? So, yeah, man. So that, but they're saying that it's, you know, their entire whatever that membership fee was, right, uh, encompassed everything. And it's important to note uh, a little bit further down, it says that there was a set amount of medical marijuana that a member could have. So there was not an unlimited supply. It's not come as you go. Yeah, because you, you would imagine, too, it's medical marijuana, right? And they're treating you, right? And it's a church of some some sort, right? right. So you got to understand there's or definitely organization within it. Like, that's two to three different organizations right so there's structure you can expect to see structure like they're not just going to be giving out free weeds like lollipops at the at the uh, doctor's office right right so, right right that's probably how they saw it but you got to remember even when you go to the doctor's office they don't really want you to take all the lollipops you know? <laughs> so on may 6 2002 mm -hmm. champs board of directors decided that they were going to discontinue all the activities Okay, probably got expensive. They can they ceased all activity mm -hmm. and filed their final corporate return uh, in 2002. Now I'm not gonna go into detail in this video all the numbers, but check it out though. I mean, I'm just man, people could definitely go. You, you should definitely go and check it out for yourself, like if you want this breakdown for sure. And we're gonna be giving you some more content that you can see uh, on YouTube, so stay tuned for that part. Definitely, definitely. We're gonna we're gonna create a video, one specifically talking about this guy right here, the yeah. the cost of goods sold. That's that's your ace in the hole when it comes to the IRS and and cannabis. But yeah. we'll talk about more of that in our cost of goods sold video. Ultimately, this is how much they made right there. Uh, was a million dollars and some change, right? Yep, yep. And they wrote off all they could to the point where they came up with a loss of $239, right? So, with that being said is... Almost breaking even, just about right. breaking even. Right, so they made this much, lost 239, right? Just yeah. just think about that. I wanna note that, again, this was, it was May 6, 2002, when they filed their tax return. The petitioner, so which is the tax court, okay? So the, the tax court mailed them a deficiency letter August 4th, 2005. And what they said was they disallow all the deductions and cost of goods sold, determining that these expenditures, which is expenses, and connect are in connection with the illegal sale of drugs mm -hmm. within the meaning of, there it goes, 280E. That's messed up though. Like, like that's messed up because there was so much extra that these people were doing outside of the actual medical marijuana like don't forget that this is a whole streamline of services right it's like I'm, I'm literally like i said visualizing travel with me right travel <laughs> with me. i'm literally seeing uh doors right like so you go okay your counseling counseling office is here right yeah. um and then you go here this is housing 
And so there's a line of there's about three, four people waiting for uh, the housing line, right? So that you know, like I'm seeing all these different services, and you don't forget we go back to that 1350 square feet and only 135 square feet being used for medical marijuana placement. I'm like, that's just in the back, right? Not a huge part, right? And it's going to piss me off the fact that y'all going to come back in 2005. <laughs> in 2005. Like, bro, 2002 to 2005, they didn't come back with a notice. Oh, yeah, we checked your taxes. You can't claim any of that. Yep. And you're like, what, what, what? <laughs> right? Like, you're like, wait, I can't claim any of that? Let, let Corey go back up and remind you guys that they made over a million. And by the time they wrote everything off, and by the way, don't forget, like, these people spent that much to the point they were in the whole $239. And out of nowhere, the IRS comes back three years later. And also think about this. <clears throat> so imagine if they stayed in business Woo. those three years, right? Woo. And <clears throat> the IRS decided to come back and say, hey, I know it's 2005, but your 2002 taxes are jacked up, right? Yeah. So since your 2002 taxes are jacked up, we're going to look at your 2003 taxes. We're going to look at your 2004 taxes. And yeah. best believe whenever you filed your 2005 taxes, we're going to look at those as well. We are already waiting. And we're going to penalize you for all of it if you did the same stuff. They, I mean, they lucky that they even, like, you know, shut down operations in 02, you know, because, um, you know, I think they would have been coming at them with more force, man, if yep. they did 2002 through 2005. But yep. still crazy, nonetheless. And also, this shows you that Uncle Sam takes his time because he Uncle knows he's going to get that money. Uncle Sam don't give a damn. He can't. But <laughs> but when you owe when you owe Uncle Sam, they want that thing ASAP. Oh yeah. <laughs> and oh, hey, and I'm just being honest, man. Look, your refund of eight thousand, ten thousand dollars that we owe you, we're gonna take our time with your refund. <laughs> <laughs> we and hey, we don't know where we don't know where to get the money. <laughs> you know? Budget cuts. Sorry. Sorry, it's rough. Right, we, we cut directly from <laughs> your budget, right? Like, uh, <laughs> but we'll get it to you. We'll get it to you eventually. But you owe us eight to ten thousand. Yo, oh, man, we're gonna have to get that from you. We're gonna have to garnish that from your wages. We, <laughs> we, 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 we're gonna garnish it, or we're gonna take your house. We you need that house. house. You want your firstborn, all right? Yeah. We want it back in blood, all right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> brr, big brr. <laughs> <laughs> all right all right um so we're gonna keep going keep going now uh fyi so this is the irs breaking down uh um the expenses that they're they're not they're, they're uh, disallowing. okay yeah. with right so they're, they're the stuff that they're going to disallow right now the opinion. So the opinion now is coming from the commissioner. So this is that. This is the unbiased third party that's going to rule in either either way's favor. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it says the parties agree that during the subject year, the that champs the petitioner had at least one trade or business for the purpose of Section 280E. Okay. Mm -hmm. According to the respondent, which is the tax court. Champs had a single trade or, or business, uh, which was trafficking and medical marijuana. Now, Champs argued that it engaged in two businesses, two trades or businesses. Champs asserted that the primary trade for their business uh, was the provision of caregiving services, right? Yeah. So that was the seven different services that we listed earlier. It, and then Champs also asserted that their secondary trade was supplying medical marijuana to his members. We're going to talk about the commissioner. So this is the third part, his opinion on everything. So you have champs versus the tax court, right? And then you got the commissioner weighing in to see if, uh, which way, if they're going to go the champs way or if they're going to go 
uh, the tax court way. Okay. So the parties agree that during the subject year, Champs, the petitioner, had at least one trade or business for the purposes of Section 280E. According, they say it's all together. According to the respondent, which is the tax court, uh, Champs had a single trade or business of trafficking in medical marijuana. Mm -hmm. Now, Champs is arguing that it engaged in two trades of business. Champs asserts that his primary trade or business was the provision of caregiving services, that his secondary trade or business was the supplying of medical marijuana to his members. See, that's just a little side thing. As to his trades or businesses, so Champs is arguing that the deductions for those trades or businesses are not precluded by Section 280E, and that the trades or businesses did not involve trafficking in a controlled substance. So basically just saying that it wasn't impacted by 280E, this ain't got nothing to do with that. And the tax court is arguing that Section 280 precludes the Champs from benefiting from any of his deductions. Crazy. So that that them breaking that down, just that little part right there, basically just saying if you're not familiar with 280E, it shuts down anything and everything that has to do with cannabis and actually being able to get your money back for it. You know how it works. You have a business, there's some expenses, and then you're thinking, okay. First of all, no matter how well your business uh, has done in that year, you're still thinking about how much of it can you get back? How much credit can you get for your hard work on top of that paycheck? Think about it. Who wouldn't do it, right? So just like any other entrepreneur, the entrepreneurs are thinking, and, and not just only entrepreneurs, they're also caregivers and all of that wellness, that whole, that whole nine, right? The only problem with that is because the... IRS basically, or, you know, tax court basically sees it as, hey, you're the same place under one roof, running some operations, whatever. We don't care. We don't care if it's two of them, seven of them, doesn't matter. It's all on, under one roof. It's one business. That part of it is not allowed. So you can't use any of these deductions. You can't write up any of these expenses. Once again, if you haven't been listening to this entire podcast, like, don't forget, don't forget, we're talking about over a million dollars with only over a million dollars made. We're trying to break even, but you're taking away the part where I get my credit back. Yep. <laughs> you're taking away the part that makes it break even. Other than that, I just threw a million dollars down the hole. I just threw a whole ticket in the trash. Come on, man. And I'm a visual guy, right? Yeah. Let's show them briefly. 280E, which we've been talking about this whole time, right? The whole time. What are you listening to? So these are the gross sales <laughs> that Jarrell's talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. These, so this is your cost of goods sold. These, all this right here are expenses. If you listen all, to just the audio, all of this. If you listen then to just the audio, just know we are talking about big numbers. You know, it's a business. You spending money on everything, meals, office expenses. You got a telephone bill, parking, any of this. And this we're talking about. They brought in a total of a million and fifty six thousand plus, right? So breaking all that down. I mean the the all that down, right? The total deductions of two hundred and twelve thousand nine hundred and fifty eight dollars. So so think about that. Think about that. Yeah. Two hundred and twelve thousand dollars that they're telling you that you can't deduct. Again, in our other videos we'll we'll cover it. So how how they operate is is your sales. Mm -hmm. That one million minus your cost of goods sold mm -hmm. equals your total sales, total revenue. Right. So, so this that's is, so right, right there. That's two hundred and twelve thousand seven hundred and nineteen dollars. That's that's their profit. Right. Their profit. Right. And so they're trying to get this to zero, and how they're getting that to zero 
is these deductions is 212,958, right? Right. So the IRS is saying, no, you can't write any of this off. Forget your rent, forget your legal expenses, forget your taxes, forget the salaries. <laughs> like the salaries, <laughs> like, the salaries. <laughs> Like that's messed up, bro. Like, right, right. come on, man. I can't write off salaries. Come right. on, come on. So they're saying, "Hey, we want to tax you on all of that. We don't care if you. We don't care if you spent it. We don't care if it's already allocated because you're a uh, trafficking medical marijuana business." We're not going to count any of your deductions. And we're only thing that we're taxing, only thing the number that we care about is this number right here. Mm. Not 239. That, and that's what we're taxing. And also keep in mind, because their ultimate goal was to break even, right? Opposite. How much money do they have saved if they're breaking even every year? There was none saved. Like, think about it. Not, not, bruh, there's no savings. There's no, for other responsible business owners, you have a account, you have something where you've been planning for tax season to roll around so that when you have to pay taxes that year, you got something to pay it with. This ain't coming out of your pocket. You're not selling the Corvette you just bought. <laughs> like, I just got this Corvette. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. so if, if you don't have the money tucked aside because you break even every year. Then what? And you're taxing me on $212,000? whole lot. Crazy. Yeah. All right, we're going to keep pushing forward. This is saying that the accrual method taxpayers such as champs may generally deduct the ordinary and necessary expenses incurred in carry on a trade or business, which we just talked about. Right. Items not deductible. So under section 162A, which is talking about the is pretty much this sentence right here. Mm -hmm. uh, it has an exception, and it says items not deductible, expenses in connection with illegal sale of drugs, is an item specified in Part Nine, and then it says Section 280E provides. So this is the def definition of 280E. No deduction or credit shall be allowed for any amount paid or incurred during the taxable year and carrying on any trade or business, if such trade or business uh, consists of trafficking in controlled substances with the meaning of Schedule 1 and Schedule 2 of the Controlled Substance Act, which is prohibited by federal law or the law of any state in which such trade or business is conducted. Never mind the fact that at this point, marijuana, Schedule 1, that sucks. Like that, like don't don't forget that part. So like don't let that part go over your head. Yep. Like marijuana is a schedule one. They, when you start going thinking about the bad drugs, like that's how we separate them. We right, right, right. Talk with your friends, right? Marijuana is one of those to the government. You thinking as harmless as we could be, they look at it like, okay, yeah, that's oxy, that's cocaine, that's you know what I'm saying? We go and go down the list, like. That's how they see it. And not only is it one of those drugs, it's the top tier Schedule 1. Well, and, oh, by the way, a Schedule 1 just literally means that there's no or very little like medical benefits to this drug. This is more like strictly recreational, if not actually damaging to a person. Like It, it has no benefit that can uh, help serve right. a person's life. Right. So, and that, that's that definition. So, yeah. And highly addictive. And highly addictive. That's the other uh, trait it must have. Yep. As we scroll down a little bit, so Champs is arguing that its supplying of medical marijuana to its members was not trafficking within the means of 280E. We all got that one friend. <laughs> <laughs> hey, in my friend group, that person's Corey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he is the champs of all my friends. He could he could take that. Let's go, champ. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> You're like, by trafficking, what do you mean? <laughs> how did how did they define it, Corey? So, let, so they say we disagree. We define and apply the gerund, 
So we like they got they got us using oh English yeah. words. You gotta go yeah. back to yeah so like middle <laughs> middle school high school. But <laughs> we apply the gerund trafficking by the reference to the verb traffic. Go with it, man. Which as relevant herein denotes or denotes to engage in commercial activity, buy and sell regularly. They even they even went they bust out Webster. Hey, you what know you, when you know when you consult Webster, like you trying to win an argument, man. Like, like in every other argument, you've gone too far once you pull out that dictionary. Right, right. Hey, they, they, they trying to save over two hundred racks. So do what you got to do. Basically, what they're saying right here is there was no selling. We didn't, we didn't sell any of it. It was all that. given to them. Three ninety nine. The verdict. Mm -hmm. So this is the commissioner. We do not believe it to have been artificial or unreasonable for champs to have characterized as separate activities its provisions of caregiving services and its provisions of uh, medical marijuana. Champs was regularly and extensively involved in the provision of caregiving services, and those services are substantially different from Champ's provision of medical marijuana. Boom, come on. By conducting its recurring discussion groups, regularly distributing food and hygiene supplies. About that part. Advertising and making available the services of personal counselors, coordinating mm. social events and field trips, hosting educational classes, and okay. providing other social services, Champ's caregiving business stood on its own separate and apart from champ's provision of medical marijuana right on, on the basis of all of the facts and circumstances of this case mm -hmm. we hold that champ's provision of caregiving services was mm -hmm. a trade or business separate and apart from its provision of medical marijuana come on come on all they saying is we believe them what y'all talking about, man? Give them, give them people their deductions, okay? And you owe us two hundred bucks. You, you, you know what they heard? What? You are not the father. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the importance of champs. This is the first time that a cannabis business medical marijuana won against the irs mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they beat uncle sam got him the likelihood of that happening is extremely low it's slim to none and this becomes the foundation of how to win against the irs mm -hmm. now the the big thing to note is they legitimately had two separate businesses they had caretaker services for those with aids hiv other ailments right and all those classes meetings all that stuff had nothing to do with medical marijuana right it operated independent within itself right like it literally operating on its own uh se se oh. separate from the uh the organization of the medical marijuana process Completely right separate. The, the thing is, there's been lots of other businesses, and we'll cover those in later videos, other court cases where they try to imitate what Champs did, but they failed. For multiple reasons. For several reasons. Yeah. For several reasons. This sparks the win for cannabis. This sparks the win for marijuana. This yeah. is inspires and gives hope to those that are looking to be in the industry that we can help others and have cannabis at the same time if you have your structuring correct if it's you all, have your structuring, it's a structuring issue you gotta literally backwards plan Corey always talks to me about backward planning so you gotta literally think about that Last but not least, y'all already know we about to get into plug talk. Plug talk, plug talk. <laughs> it's plug talk. Hey. Yes, sir. So, you know, I'm always 
they're going to get to know me for sure, Corey. They got to understand the okay. you to the can of brush. You're going to know I'm always searching for a dope business that's all about the movement, right? I'm looking for, I've been looking for like a business in itself that is a mini movement, right? Within right. the movement, right? So people who really believe in what they're doing, you can tell they got a passion and the love for it and the thorough. You can always tell by like how they set up their businesses and how they try to make sure that they have a connection with the people. Yep. So right now I got two businesses uh, for this go round okay. that y'all should definitely check out. Right? Okay. Uh, so we kept it in Texas with it. All okay. right. Um, and the first one, one being in Dallas, the second being in Corpus Christi. All right. Hey. So, so the first hey. one in Dallas is a CBD farmhouse Delta 8 slash Crantum and Bates. So okay. long name, but they normally go by CBD farmhouse. That's their IG uh, tag. So CBD okay. farmhouse, right? De but Delta 8 is in their name. So you already know what they specialize in. Look, I ain't got no product on me right now. <laughs> I don't, I don't, but Delta 8 gummies, Delta 8 gummies are cool. Okay. Chill. It's definitely a difference. We talked about Delta 8 versus Delta 9. There's definitely a difference, but CBD Farmhouse actually specializes in their Delta 8 gummies. That's what people know them for. So I recommend if you go there to start with this Delta 8 gum. Let's take a look at what they got. All right. Let's take a look. So the CBD okay. Farmhouse on the ground. Go ahead. See what they have. Yeah. Look at some posts. You know what they talking about. Oh, is that them Delta 8 gummies? Delta 8 gummies. Yeah, man. And then once again, this is another spot where, man, the little the little vibe in here looks like it's right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's always important, man. It's always important, especially if you're going to stay to actually uh, like enjoy, you know, kind of hang out, vibe out. Yeah, man. Like different flavors. So I see strawberry, pineapple, there's a blueberry, a little berry craze. Pretty good. Okay. Like the setup, I like the setup. Like they were out at some kind of it was like a car show, or whatnot, man. Well, I thought these were actually <laughs> <clears throat> thought it was just huge bottles. <laughs> yeah. First at first glance, I was like, okay. okay. I got with the giant bottles. Yeah, lip balm. Come on, man. Is that for pets? Is that a? Is that a? Is that a? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So okay, CBD for pets. Oh, that hey, that's a whole nother, you know, demo right there, man. That's a yeah. that's a huge market. It, yeah. it really is, though. Yeah, I know when I was in, uh, we kind of covered, um, uh, uh, the weed spot before, and uh, yeah, they were, yeah, they they definitely had all the, the pet pet goodies. Yeah. Delta Eight Infused Cookout. That's cool. Got me hungry already. <laughs> I'm hungry right now. Yep. Yeah. Now, uh, again, we want to put that disclaimer out there. Uh, you will pop hot if you if your employer tests you. So uh, yeah. consume at your own risk. At your own risk. That's what's up. But again. We got CBD Farmhouse. CB, so that's 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 the spot to go, man. Check them out once again at 4448 Spring Valley Road in Dallas, Texas. That CBD Farmhouse. We don't need it, but we don't need it. But they 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 say they got your support and they appreciate it. Hey, go ahead, go ahead, and give them a follow. Bye. Yep, go ahead and give them a follow. Boom, we we just did. Also, you know, uh, CBD uh, Farmhouse is black owned, so. Hey. Support them, yes, sir. You already know how we do with movement. Minorities, businesses, black-owned business, right here in Dallas, Texas, on forty-four forty-eight Spring Valley Road in Dallas. Check out CBD Farmhouse, and again on IG at CBD Farmhouse. Check out those Delta Eight gummies and whatever else they got going on. I'm telling you, the variety is crazy. The second that we have for plug talk. Is Bad Buzz out there in Corpus Christi? So look, hey. uh, y'all check out Bad Buzz. They're located at 4455 South Padre Island Drive. Okay. Four. 
in your place, Corpus Christi. I found them directly at their website. Okay. Right? Which was badbudcbd.com. Okay. Uh, first off, very smooth website. I like how it looks. Smooth. Smooth. Yeah, bad. So bad buds, they actually, man. I mean, they they have some uh, some of their similar items on there, but it what stood out to me, they have this intense relief rub that I was like, you might want to try that, right? Like, so they and this kind of reminds me of the champs case talking about like wellness and all this kind of stuff, right? Like that. But yeah, that right there, that no, that a thousand milligram. Intensive relief rub, and you're giving your, your, your lady massages. You know, she not had a rough time at work and everything. You're trying to show her your appreciation. Man, if you don't grab some of that relief rub, they got the intensive release rub. They got a freeze rub. Yep. Which, hey, I don't know so much about massages and all that kind of stuff on a professional level, but I'm sure there's benefits to each one that would be important to you, right? So they got that, man. They got pain cream. I like it, man. This that's what really stood out to me is that they were clearly concerned about uh carving their niche into the wealth wellness game with their products. Oils, uh, they definitely got the pet uh pet friendly C B D items and they got pre rolls. So if you just, you know, you you know, you like the flower, you like the Delta Eight, uh, you like all that kind of stuff like that, make sure that you actually can get a pre roll so you save yourself some time because you that's gotta cool. Yeah. So we got some of the beauty, get some of those blemishes out, you know? Yeah, man. They got, they got beauty spot products. care. Yeah. Yeah. They got, they definitely got a uh, beauty uh, treatment, all kind of different uh, products, man. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to have to check them out. I'm going to have to check them out. Bad yeah. Buds. Once again, that's 4455 South Padre Island Drive, Sweet Four in Corpus Christi. So check them out. Get yourself some of that relief rub and you know, some uh, brightening cream or something like that, if that's what you need, right? That's Plug Talk, man, for this episode of the Canna Bros Podcast, man. We had to go ahead and let you guys know. Once again, as always, man, we appreciate you guys. Yep. Like always, like, share, subscribe. Go ahead and put somebody else on the Canna Bros. Yep. Do them the favor. Do us the favor. Do yourself a favor just for being the guy that, that sent the alley, right? You can always reach us directly. At Harvest AF on Instagram, yep. Harvest ACC Firm LLC on Twitter. Yep. Yeah. And, and don't forget that you can always just simply send us an email. Let us know what's going on. Get in the DMs. Yep. Let's figure out what you need for your business. Also, maybe just some ideas that you may have that could really benefit anybody that's involved within the movement. If you're a business that wants to be plugged in yeah. the cannabis industry, it doesn't just have to be a retail. It could be a cultivator. It it, it doesn't matter. If you're in the cannabis field, we're, we're here to share the love. Help us help you. That's, help that's, help you. that's a big thing, right? And yeah. As I said before, our motto is we're with you from seed to success. <laughs> so we want to be supporting you from when you just start your business yeah. all the way up to when you're a corporation making all your dreams come true make sure you subscribe like comment and make sure you support the movement hashtag harvest yeah. af uh, what's the af stand for harvest and another fire podcast <laughs> fire on them boys <laughs> canna bros <laughs> canna bros hashtag canna bros make sure you look us up again support the movement and we out we out welcome to the show welcome to the show here to give you knowledge that you didn't know Put you on some game, now you got a buzz. You are now listening to Canna Bros.